Hey, how's everybody doing? We are going to tie the next iteration of the version of the balanced belly flop damsel. Uh, definitely one of my more effective damsel patterns and I'm um, a big fan of balanced flies anyway. This is a great version of a damsel and it just happens to be balanced. So what I start off with is a, I use these embroidery pins and I've tried a bunch of different ones and these tend to work okay. Um, you can get these by the hundreds at Walmart. So this is what it looks like and it's obviously a little longer than you need and it's pointed at the end. So I'll end up just snipping this off with some wire cutter pliers and <clears throat> then I'm just going to put this right into the, uh, the jaws with my bead on there. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to tie on our, our eyes and we're just going to make the eyes with some melted monofilament like so you just get a lighter burn each end and you work it down into a little ball like that uh, you can make these a bunch at a time so we just start with the thread on there and then just right at the end we'll position the eyes I'll usually strap them on <clears throat> parallel and then as you rotate and twist it you can turn them so it's gonna look kinda like that and <clears throat> a couple more wraps and then I usually just whip finish this right in front that's one nice thing about having this Tiemco dual whip finisher. It's got that really small head. The midge whip finisher is the same. So you can get in there in a really tight spot like that. And <clears throat> you can do this without cutting the thread, but I, I don't like to bring it back over the bead. So I'm just going to pop right in behind that bead and just build up a little bit of a thread dam. That kind of helps to center the bead and lock it in there. We'll eventually throw some dubbing up in there so it's not a huge deal, but it makes it easier when you're tying. Just like that. And then we'll finish again. Now I'm going to come in with some Z-Mant. And this just helps to make the eyes and the beads stay in place a little bit better. So I'll grab some of this Z-Mint and just build up a little bit. You don't need a ton. I usually, oh, it's going to be too much, put a bit right on the top and then on the underside. Again, that just helps to stabilize it all. And the nice thing, you can do a bunch of these, <clears throat> just stick the ends in a piece of foam so that it doesn't uh, stick to anything. But then you can, you tie a bunch of these at once, and that way when you go to tie the fly like we are right now, you just grab one of these. You don't have to reset everything up with the pins. You just do them in sequence. All right, for the main part of the fly, and this is, uh, this is where you need to really just do a, a little bit of a check on the balance of the, of the fly. So we'll start off, we've got our uh, Hannock 400. This is an awesome jig hook, it's barbless. And I lay a base of thread, and this is where we'll first attach the, uh, the head, the balance part. And I like to hold, I like to make it so that the eyes are on the top uh, well on the bottom side as we're tying but it'll be on the top as it's oriented and what I'll do is I'll push that right to the edge of the eye of the hook so I want the bead to be just just beyond that now um, I usually do these in two versions this is the 3.3 millimeter version you can also do it in the 2.8 bead size the the smaller the bead obviously on the 2.8 you're gonna want it out a little further so it'll balance but but uh, regardless what I'll do is I'll slide that back into where I want, where I kind of envision this. And I'm just going to lash this on and we'll do a little balance test. That's what you really need to do 
before you get too far on this pattern because you may need to adjust it. What I found is that once you've added all the materials in, it doesn't affect the balance as much because the materials will still balance each other out because we'll have some dubbing up front, we'll have the tail and a little bit of dubbing in the back. So it's not gonna be as much of a difference in the balance than it is right now. So what I can do is I can go ahead and just whip finish this. Now I'm just gonna grab a piece of monofilament and we're gonna test the balance. All right, so I've got this balanced on here. If anything, you want it a little bit slanted, uh, bead heavy, because the depending on how you tie it in, the marabou tail may offset that. So in the end, when all the materials will tie it in, it, it may be a little bit more level, but ultimately it's not gonna make that big of a difference. So as long as you have it fairly level at this point, you're gonna be fine. So now that we've done that, we don't have to do that on any other flies, at least in this session where I'm using the same sizes, the same bead, same everything like that. And then one thing to be careful of is that when you cut these pins, they do create a little sharp edge. So I usually just slow down when I'm tying in that section. And then sometimes, especially on these ones where I'm using a bigger bead, I'm going to put a little bit more Z-Mint in the lashing of that uh, pin. I just throw that on the edge and then throw in some glue on either side. And then I'll just take a bodkin and you can take off the excess or rub it in. And then I like to run a layer of thread over the top back and then we're just going to go back to our tie-in point. So one thing to notice, I've got a little bit of a discrepancy in the taper, so we'll, we'll fix that here in a minute with some marabou. But uh, first things first, we're going to tie in the tailing materials. So first I'm going to use some midge flash. You could also use crystal flash. I kind of like the midge stuff because it's, it's uh, more limp, smaller. And I'm just going to line this up. right at the bend of the hook there. And you can cut that into, the, or you could wrap that forward if you want. I'll cut these here in a sec once I get my marabou tied in. So now I'm gonna grab some golden olive marabou. This is the Nature Spirit Strung marabou. So I'm just gonna grab a little section off the side. Now you'll notice that the the overall fly length, obviously, with with the bit of an extension there, we're um, we're not going to be measuring just the shank of the hook usually, but in this case, with it being a, a damsel, and I don't want it to be super duper long, um, I am going to keep kind of the length from about the bead is how I'm going to gauge it back that length, and then I'm just going to tie this in, and I'll just work the thread forward. And I'm going to go to that point where the pin drops off and go right up against that because you can see where the pin is. Now I'm going to pull this back and wrap back over right before that where the tail begins. And just keep a hold of that. That way you can trim it off. <clears throat> that helps to even us out. And then I'll grab my midge flash and trim that a bit. Okay, pretty easy so far. Next thing I'm going to do is make a dubbing loop. So I'm going to grab my handy shepherd's loop on the Loon Gator Grip. And you just grab your thread and you want about three inches or so of loop. And you'll do a couple of wraps and then I'm going to come in behind it and lock it in. And then you can either hold this off into a material clip, or I just use the little knob on the Renzetti here, and that will hold it right off to the side there. So I can grab my tinsel. So I've got some Opal Mirage tinsel. This is size large. And this is just gonna be the base of the body. 
and it's also going to show through. That's one of the things that I think helps make this so effective. So we'll just tie that in. <clears throat> now because I've got that dubbing loop back there, I don't need my thread anymore until right about here is where we'll tie that off. And just wrap this up to that point. And then we'll just wrap all the way and trim that off. So now we grab our dubbing loop and I've got my dubbing blend, which is um, ice dub in Canadian, Arizona semi seal Canadian olive, Canadian brown. And then I'll either use ice dub in golden brown or olive brown. It depends. The golden brown's a little shinier. The olive brown's going to be more olive. So I actually tie them in both colors. But I mix them in three equal parts. And, and this is the coloration that I get. And I'm a huge believer in these multicolor spectrumized dubbings. Uh, a guy I've known for years, Jeff Brooks, was one that kind of pointed me in that direction of that style of dubbing. And uh, let me tell you, it is killer so just get you get three packs of dubbing i mix them all together equally you can use a coffee grinder if you want i just mix them by hand uh, brush them and then i'm going to use about four chunks and slide each of those into my loop okay once i've got a good amount of dubbing you know you don't need too much, but you need a little bit at least. And I'm now going to just spin the gator grip tool. And it's got enough weight and momentum at the bottom there that it just spins right up. And it's going to create a tight loop. What I'll do, I'm going to brush this out a couple times. So first off, when it's like this, I'm going to grab my Stompho dubbing brush and just kind of pick out the fibers that have but the bound down in bigger clumps. So that kind of evens it out. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come in with some scissors and I want the fibers closest to the back to be a little bit shorter. And so I'm just going to go around this loop and trim uh, kind of at a taper. So the longer fibers will be towards the front and the smaller trimmed ones are going to be towards the tail. And then once I've done that, I can go ahead and just wrap. And you want to do leave a little bit of space in between the turns so you can kind of see that the underbody is showing through there once I get up to the balanced part of it. Just a couple wraps right next to the head. <clears throat> and then I'll just preen those back and trim off the excess. And then I'll just make a couple of securing wraps and we'll whip finish. Now I just like to come in and do a final brush out and trim. Damselflies have very visible buggy legs, so there's no need to over trim this. Plus it can, it can capture water and it, and it looks uh, nice and buggy. So we've trimmed that up a little bit. Again, you can see the tinsel showing through on the body. When that gets wet, it creates a nice translucent water holding kind of effect. Anyway, it's a killer, killer pattern. Um, I fish this even when there's no damsels around per se, even though there's some in the water where we'll fish. Uh, it's a it's a great still water attractor pattern. I fish it. You can fish it on any sort of sinking line. You can fish it on an indicator. Nice thing about the balanced presentation is that the fly will be level, like you saw there. <clears throat> and so tie some of these up. 
almost any still water you have is going to have damsels. So this is a style of pattern that will fish pretty much good anywhere you go, uh, lake or reservoir. And then, just like I said, the balance doesn't change a ton. did change a little bit, but uh, overall it's still the orientation that I want after I've got all the materials on there. So there we go. Mm -hmm.